All right, welcome back to Jonesy Cast. I'm Jonesy, and this is the cast. Hey, um, like and subscribe if you would like to subscribe. If you don't want to, that's cool. Now, this time we've got a uh, personal video. A young man has sent me um, a request for a video, so we're going to do that. Now, let's begin. I'm a 23-year-old guy with no meaningful experience with women, never been on a date or a relationship, etc. I like to think I'm an incredible catch with how great of a guy I am. Bro, you're not allowed to say that you're a great guy. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. All right, self-love through the roof. A man of many hobbies and extremely affectionate towards others. Okay, here's the first thing. I would not classify myself as an incredible catch and as a great guy if I had never been on a date or been in a relationship. Now, that doesn't mean that you're a bad person. Not at all. Right. It just means, you know, you got to be a bit humble about your skills and experience. Um, but again, I, I think because I've read this whole thing, I don't think you're necessarily arrogant about it. I just mean that um, <clears throat> if you if it is true that you've never been on a date or had a relationship um, and for the reasons that you also mentioned below, um, the thing is, you're going to have to practice now because you are in. I was about to read, I grew up in an extreme Muslim household. So it may be the case that your parents try to match you up with someone because you, I think you live in the States in California, you may find that you don't get matched up with someone, um, but super conservative Muslim parents have a tendency to do that. Not so much Christian parents anymore, um, super conservative Hindu parents, Indian parents, they're, they're always trying to match their kids and usually that happens. So, um, but if that's not the case, one thing I would do is get practice, go on a few dates. But you've also written that um, you get down and sad if they don't go well. Um, and you've also written kind of that you feel like you're objectifying women if you go on dates with them and and get their numbers and that kind of thing. I mean, I, I suppose I can see how one could see that, but at the end of the day, man, if you want to get good at anything, you have to do it. So you can you can pick one woman and know her deeply and you and her will both have to deal with your incompetence around dating and relationships. Look, I'm going to be honest with you. <clears throat> I've said many times in these videos that I've slept with a lot of women. But at the end of the day, the reason that I'm comfortable saying it and genuinely not believing it's a brag is because it doesn't matter, right? A lot of guys think that I've slept with a lot of women, so I'm awesome. Not at all, man. Because the problem is not only does it not make you awesome because you don't have the skill of knowing one woman deeply, it actually makes you um, worse because you think you know what you don't know, right? Now, I'm not accusing you of that. I'm accusing, like I was guilty of that, right? So don't feel bad about the fact that you've never been on a date or had a relationship just understand that failure is a component of success, okay? So you are going to go through the wrong woman, wrong woman, wrong woman, wrong woman, right woman, right? Or you'll get the right one and you just got to do the hard work and the homework of working it out, okay? Of getting through your mistakes. Like me and my missus, we find mistakes in each other and in ourselves fucking three times a week, man. It's incredible, you know? But then... One thing that she's amazing at, and I'm pretty good at, I, I hope, is I will listen to her when she tells me that there's something wrong with me, right? And she will listen to me when I tell her something that I think something's wrong with her, right? Now, because I could be wrong when I tell her that, and she could be wrong when she tells me that. Um, but I listen to what she thinks, and I listen to what she says. So if you're planning to go into one relationship and then stay in that relationship, you're going to have to get good at that listening and speaking and picking out where she's wrong and she's messed up and picking out where you've wrong you've wronged her and you've messed up and also listening to whether or not you think you got to listen to her first and then you have to decide whether or not 
what she said is relevant and applicable, right? Um, but let's go on, right? I tried the dating apps and I really did put the effort in and they are genuinely not for me in the slightest. I get, I get significantly down when I'm on them and they are just not a healthy thing for me to do. So I knew I had to delete them and never look back. Look, if that's what you want to do, man, that's what you want to do. I mean, you are you are significantly reducing your chances of meeting complete idiots. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> there's not much else to say on that. Like, here's the thing. I've done a couple of videos in the past saying that dating apps are just a numbers game, and they really are. The problem is that formal and normal dating is also a numbers game, right? So I could give you tips on how to make dating apps better. I mean, I put on my profile, let's talk on the phone like 90s kids because I'm 33, right? So when I was on those dating apps on which I met my current girlfriend um, and I hope I hope she becomes my wife and then I die in her arms. Like she's amazing and I love her. I met her on Bumble, right? And but that's after I kissed a lot of frogs, you know? And I think it seems to me throughout this, I've been reading this, it seems like you're a sensitive guy and you're a nice guy and you're a sweet guy. That is a consequence of the generation that you've been brought up in. Um, men in the West are a lot softer than they used to be. It's also a consequence of your personality um, and your biology. I mean, I'm not going to diss you for being a sensitive guy and being a nice guy. But don't be too nice and don't be too sensitive, okay? Look, life is hard. Life is really hard. Um, and you're going to have to deal with everything, including death, in the, in the life of your family and friends and then yourself, okay? So you can't be too soft. You're going to have to get comfortable with the fact that, again, it goes back to either you um, become comfortable with dating a number of women consecutively not at the same time because that's a dog act but consecutively and failing in those relationships so that you can um, get into a relationship that works so you can learn how to be in relationships you're either going to have to get comfortable with that or you're going to have to get comfortable with being in one and um, just working through it until you get it right look man i said to my missus I said, we we're in the car on the way somewhere. And I said to her, I'm willing to have the same conversation with you again and again and again and again and again until we get it right. Because if, if, if I'm not willing to do that, the only option is fight or break up. That's it. Because, you know, we can't get it right. So I'm willing to have that conversation. And if you're willing to do that, but you've got to stand up for yourself as well, right? Um. <clears throat> Let's keep going. Um, oh, no, sorry. Back to what I was saying. Look, if if you don't want to do the dating apps, that's fine. But you're going to have to create situations in which um, the idea of dating or, you know, her interest in you can be brought up by you, right? So... You said that you were looking at work. Mm, I mean, it's not a it's not the best idea because you work with them and if something goes wrong, you know, they can make a claim on you. And you mentioned your industry, mate, and you need to be fucking careful because that industry is full of just just sensitive pansies that can't handle themselves, you know. Um and they are willing to go to a higher authority to deal with their emotions. Um but let's move on. I get significantly done when I'm on them and they're just not a healthy, a healthy thing for me to do. So I knew I had to delete them and never look back. There you go. I grew up and in an extreme Muslim household, one I am still in, which has ironically made me a strong atheist. Yeah, I've, I feel that, man. I became an atheist. At, I was raised in a conservative Christian household and I became an atheist at about the age of 22, 23. Um and it was heartbreaking for me because my whole identity was based on there being a God. Um, and so it, it was heartbreaking. But I'm glad that I was raised in that kind of household and in church because it made me the man I am today. 
you know. Um, although there are many restrictions on me that I can't wait to escape, there comes a point where I have to face the truth of no longer having that as a valid excuse of going nowhere with women. I mean, to a degree, you're right in that in a sense, but at the same time, when I was 23, I dated a girl, I was living at home, she was living at home, and we just didn't have our own space. And that makes it really hard, man, because you're dealing with the generation of young women that have somewhat an expectation of their own space. Um, so I wouldn't be too hard on yourself. What I would do instead is just make plans to move into your own space or look room with that room with a roommate or a housemate or something, you know, so that the rent's cheaper. Um, but you can have your own space because you need the space in which to make mistakes. One thing that a lot of very religious and conservative parents do not like is providing a space for you to make sexual mistakes. Um, to make, and I'm not talking about anything with non-consent. I'm talking about just little hiccups, right? Like you both consent and then you can't get hard or she doesn't get wet or um, you put the condom on wrong and you got to get a new one or, you know, just whatever it is, you know, like you need space to make mistakes, but your parents are not going to give you that space. So you need to have that space to be able to make mistakes and then move on to the next and then move on to the next and then get the one that you're meant to be with, right? <clears throat> um. So again, I wouldn't be too hard on yourself. The biggest, like, but work towards getting your own space. The biggest mistake was deciding not to live on campus when I went to college, but that's because I didn't bloom into a social butterfly into after college anyways. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So ever since then, I've been really social in the past year or so. I've been hitting on so many women with conversations. I usually always get the number, but then either it goes nowhere or they never respond. Okay, so there's an interesting thing here because you say, ever since then, I've been really social and in the past year or so, I've been hitting on women. I didn't bloom into a social butterfly until after college. Okay, so you're hitting on women and you don't have a place to take them, right? Um, so the issue there is that you are going into battle firing blanks because you can't take them anywhere. So that will inform the confidence you have in a conversation. It'll inform the things you say in a conversation. So look, I've been on many, many one night stands and I've had many dates and the best dates were always at either my place or her place, okay? Um, not a hotel room, not their friend's house, not some other business or fucking wherever else in the back of a pub, you know, changing room or whatever. Um, the best ones were my place or her place, where one of us at least has the freedom to feel like ourselves in our space, in my space or her space. Because in my space, I can be me and she can be her. And in her space, she can be her. And I'm just me anyway, anywhere. So, you know, whatever. So that's what you need to get sorted. I really think that you need to get yourself in your own space. Now, again, that doesn't have to be you by yourself. It can be with someone that you room with, but they need to be okay with you being you, right? Um, so ever since I've been with, <clears throat> I've been hitting on so many women with conversations, I usually always get the number and then either it goes nowhere or they don't respond. I realized this made me see women as objects. I don't know why it did. Um, as a potential match and a number. So I was disgusted myself and just started to go down the spiral of sadness again. Look, when you do one night stands, you're treating a woman as an object, right? But she's treating you as an object. I'm not worried about treating women as objects. I'm worried about equality, right? I mean, for me, mate, I was happy to be used and thrown away. <laughs> I mean, it sounds bad and it sounds shallow and it is because, you know, like one thing that people don't, one thing that a lot of people don't want to get comfortable with is the fact that if you are going to make sex transactional or one night standy or, uh, you know, the free love revolution, you are cheapening it. 
you are cheapening sex because you're making it more available, right? So you can talk about free love all you want, but ain't no nobody wants something that's free, all right? Um, what we want is something worth having and anything worth having takes work, okay? So <clears throat> it's <clears throat> it's a difficult balance that you have to manage because on one hand, you want to be worth something and treat the woman as worth something. But on the other hand, you have to be prepared to make mistakes sexually in dating and in relationships. So you have to find the balance between those, right? And when you make mistakes, you have to forgive yourself, right? Um, so I don't know why you went down the spiral of sadness because... I think I maybe you feel you felt bad about seeing those women as objects. But I mean, look. I I don't see women as objects. I see her as a woman, right? I see my girlfriend as a woman, as a person, as a human. I see them as equal to me, right? But what I also know is that they will never understand the full scope of who I am. My missus might, my girlfriend might, but a girl that I'm just meeting is not going to understand the full scope of who I am, right? And if we go and have sex at my place or her place, then um, that's what it is. It's a sexual encounter. It's not, you know, like I'm an object to her and I'm fine with that. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, I had usually get the number. I realize this made me see women as an object, as a potential match. Yeah, that's fair. Look, if you're looking at them as seeing them as notches on your belt, that's a problem because you don't want to put yourself above them, right? You want to be equal because I'm a notch on her belt. I've been a notch on many women's belts, man, and that's completely fine, right? So let's keep going. I have female friends that I have no interest in being with, so it's not an issue of not knowing how to talk to or be a great person with. So I didn't know what was wrong with me. I love to... Okay, so there... You have friends that are women. That's very different to having a romantic relationship that's a woman. I said this in a former video um, that you need to be a little more dangerous. What, what women want is confidence, competence, and a little bit of danger. Okay, just a little bit of danger. Um, they need to, They want to see a formidable man. They want to see someone that will look them in the eye with confidence. Not threatening, and that's a fine line that you've got to really distinguish, right? Some women want a little puppy of a man that they can control. I'm not going to be that man, okay? Whereas some women want a man that they can tame into because he's a wolf, right? He's, he's a dangerous man, um, but not dangerous to her. Um, and he never uses his capacity for violence or anything else in a bad way. He never overpowers anyone in a bad way he uses it for defense all right i'm not making a good argument towards uh what i was saying because i'm, I'm trying to think of a few things at once but i mean <clears throat> you, you don't be nice okay with your female friends you're nice with the woman that you're trying to romance you're good okay you're honest you're true um now honesty means telling her things that sometimes she doesn't want to hear but she, that gets respect, you know? So let's keep going. I love to run and be active and fit. Good. That'll keep you well in the years to come. I love talking to people. And since I love myself so much, I feel very comfortable with being myself with everyone because I want that positive energy to show. I run barefoot. So I feel like I've conquered the, social, the societal hurdle of trying to fit the mold and worry about judgment. That's good, but there is a place for worrying about judgment. Okay. Um, which I would imagine is also a positive energy that I radiate. I feel like it, an important detail is I have never and never will make any socials besides Reddit. That's fair. That's fair. I can understand that and I would agree with it. Um, in that case, you're cutting yourself off again from a whole lot of bananas, but you're also cutting yourself off from potentially uh, a woman that is on socials. Just keep that in mind. But again, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. Um, you're going to have to think of new ways to meet women if that's the case. The toxic reasons for why I won't get on socials are different can of worms, though. I won't deny they have advantages. There you go. And that I knew I was going to be making some sacrifices in terms of meeting a lot more people, including women. 
I'm, I'm glad you know that. But I didn't know it was this bad. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. It's because, look, mate, you're 23. You know, you're not 45 anymore. Anymore. Why did I say that? You're not 45, right? Every girl in your generation is on socials. All right. So my friend's circle these days aren't the type to be bar goers or to be fit to join me in a volleyball team or something like that or be social in general. So they turn away opportunities to meet people. That's fair. Um, I'm obviously friends with them for different reasons. So this is not something I would, ne- wouldn't be okay with. I'm just stuck since my only option is to go to these things all by my lonesome just to meet someone. Okay, here's the rule. Don't go to bars yourself. Don't go to bars yourself. Pick one mate or pick a girlfriend, right? Pick a mate because if you go there with a girl, every girl in the pub will assume that you, that's the girlfriend. Um, don't go to bars by yourself. You need to stop that, okay? And the reason you need to stop that is because um, you give off that energy and that impression that you're here by yourself. And when you're in the conversation and they say, who are you here with? And you say, by myself, like, (laughs) that's no, no, right? So stop doing that. Um, Find a way to go to bars with a mate or just don't go, all right? Um, Where are we? Restarting... I would often leave empty handed, which would, yeah, exactly. Because you're not, guys who goes to bars themselves, it's not good, man. So instead of trying to wait for it to come naturally. So I've been talking to chicks at work and I'd get their numbers and then the exact same story happens. Either they don't respond or it goes nowhere. And that energy they showed in the conversation vanishes, vanishes and they became dead fish. Okay, on that, you need to keep trying. You need to change up what you're doing and you need to... Um, uh, keep going. It's again, it's a numbers game. You're gonna get knocked back, and that's fine. Um, Sylvester Stallone took his Rocky screenplay to I think a hundred directors before he got knocked before he got accepted. Like the man just was relentless, and a man who gets the woman he wants is relentless. Okay, you have to be relentless. Um. Do, 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 do. when that happens I let go immediately because something I've ingrained in my brain is if she likes you you'll know not true not true if she doesn't like you you you'll be confused we I mean you because <laughs> the thing is you could be confused anyway look you're a 23 year old dude which means you're a little bit of a banana okay and you know that's okay because we all were at 23 but you're not gonna know if she likes you just because you think you're going to know if she likes you. Doesn't work that way, bro. I mean, guys are oblivious. Like women have, they have that intuition that they kind of know, but even some girls are just bananas and they have no idea when a guy likes them, right? But guys are terrible for it. So you need to get rid of that. You need to get rid of that. Um, I, what I'm concerned about is whether you like her and whether you can in a classy way, in a confident way, let her know that, okay? So with how undesirable my lack of success makes me feel, it's hard not to let the sadness and loneliness get to me and I feel like I have to change or do something if I don't want to be lonely forever. Look, I agree with you, but you've just said something interesting. Your sadness and your in your uh, perspective of loneliness on yourself really conflicts with, I like to think I'm an, I'm an incredible catch, self-love through the roof, um, and confidence. I mean, it's one or the other. It's one or the other, you know. And then I feel pretty hopeless since pretty much every day now I fight back feelings of sadness and loneliness. So any help? Okay. You need to be okay with the sadness and loneliness, okay? If you are sad and lonely because you don't have a woman and you know that, just accept it. That's what I did. Right now, this may be easier for me to say than it is for you to do, but you need to accept that you're going to be, you're going to feel sad and lonely because you don't have a woman in your life. But because you know the reason, mate, the worst thing is to feel something and you don't know why. That is the worst. But as soon as I know why I feel something, I go, oh, okay, sweet. That's why I'm just going to keep on doing life. I'm going to keep on doing me, right? Um, 
I heard you say something that I really need to drill into my brain along the lines of playing hard to get. Be someone worth having so that you can have someone worth having. That's 100% true, man. You need to be someone worth having. Now, for you, I don't know what that means. Look, I don't want you to feel good about yourself as a consequence of someone telling you that you should have self-esteem. I want you to feel good about yourself because you've earned the right to feel good about yourself, okay? Um, Now, that means achieving things. It means becoming someone. It means doing the right things and watching yourself do the right things, having confidence in yourself, right? Now, it looks like you're good at that in terms of running and being a nice guy and being a good guy, but what you need to work on is the sadness associated with being by yourself. Listen, man, you're 23. I didn't meet my missus, my keeper, until I was uh, 32, right? And I started really sleeping around when I was about 25. So, mate, you've got plenty of time, plenty of time. Don't stress too much, okay? Don't stress too much. That lonely feeling that you have, what you need to do, just as as a Band-Aid, right? Listen to a shitload of podcasts. I would recommend the Jordan B. Peterson podcast. Um, And I would recommend his series, the biblical series, um, which you may resonate with because you understand uh, Islamic religious um, doctrine. I was a Christian, so I understand it a lot, but it may resonate with you. Um, Another one I would recommend is the Joe Rogan experience. I know that everyone's going to get on me about that, but I don't care. Um, Listen to his guests. It's mainly his guests that I like. Um, Listen listen to podcasts um, and read and read and read and read and read, right? (laughs) Just read. Fiction, nonfiction, philosophy. What you want to do is you want to read the Stoics. Sorry. You want to read the Stoics, uh, like Marcus Aurelius uh, and a few of the other ones. And you want to read uh, nonfiction um, and, you know, whatever you like. Murder mystery, high fantasy. I love high fantasy, right? Um, Because that will keep you busy instead of feeling lonely, all right? But now that you know that you feel lonely because you're missing something, you can, like, I'm good at compartmentalizing. Maybe you're not so good at it, but I'm good at it. Okay. So I have this feeling of loneliness because... I don't have a girlfriend. I'm going to put that here and I'm going to address that when I have a girlfriend. Other than that, there's nothing I can do. So I'm just going to stop focusing on it, right? Um, Here we go. We're going to have to finish up because we're nearly at half an hour. But I think the wrong mentality to have since I don't want to be with someone that is with... uh, Okay, so hold on. I've been really yearning for that independence and freedom for when I move out and I tell myself something will happen then. I'm going to be honest, man. You're probably right about that. It's probably going to happen. I just don't want to hit my dog with the chair. It's probably going to happen when you move out, okay? But I think that's the wrong mentality to have since I don't want to be with someone that is with me because I have a place to bring them rather than for who I am as a person. All right, you need to get that idea out of your head. Um, And it's not because you're you're a banana because that, you know, it's incorrect, but it's not silly, okay? It's just incorrect. Having your own place doesn't, mean that someone's going to date you because you have your own place. It means that you can have your own space to be you, right? And then they can see you instead of the man that you have to be in front of your parents or in front of her parents or at her, wherever, you know, out in public. You want to you wanna have a sanctuary that you can go to and be yourself, okay? Um, it's also wrong... Because once I do move out and I'm finally on my own and nothing happens after months, then the sadness will be more exponentially more painful since my excuse is no longer there to fall back on. That's true, but that just means you need to keep yourself busy. You need to buy a fucking PlayStation, (laughs) right? It's not a bad thing to keep yourself busy while you're waiting on that person to come into your life. That's what I did, man. I used to play PlayStation a lot. I used to read a lot. I used, you know, I do fucking YouTube videos and I, um, I have to keep myself busy and I'm in a relationship, bro. <laughs> so, cause you got to remember a relationship is not going to solve all your problems. It's, she's not going to be the answer to all your problems. You're still going to have to keep yourself busy. You're still going to have to keep yourself occupied, right? Um, <clears throat> 
Not to mention the problem of whether or not to be honest with women about my lack of experience. Yes, be honest, 100%. Because in doing so, you will weed out the ones that are with you for the wrong reasons, right? Listen, I'm going to finish up here and I'm going to tell you a few things. Number one, you need to write down what you want in a relationship. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll understand how important this is. Write it down so that when the thoughts of you know, the thoughts of conflict come into your mind, you can look at what you've written down, right? Instead of, you know, just flying away like butterflies and then you get distracted by something else. Write down what you want in a relationship. Write down what you don't want in a relationship. I want you to write down what you're looking for, okay? Do you want one night stands? Because they are empty and fun, okay? That's what they are. They are really fun and they are really empty. Okay, but they're super easy. Do you want to be a serial monogamist? You know, three month relationship, four month, five month, six month, two month, one month, six month, four month. You're going to get caught as the rebound or you're going to be someone else's rebound if you do that or they are going to be your rebound. Okay, so you need to prepare for that. Or the other one is, do you want a single long term relationship? I assume you're a virgin with another woman who has your kind of, shares your values and doesn't have as much experience as well. You need to decide what you want and then you need to go for that, okay? Um, that's what, So I want you to write down what you want in a relationship, what you don't want. Now, this is for a long-term relationship. The man you want to be and the woman you want to have. Then I want you to write down what you're looking for now. Do you want one-night stands in between, uh, like friends with benefits, casual, whatever? Or do you want a serious, long-term, static, consistent relationship, okay? Because that will decide on what you do, on, on how you act, okay? Now, again, I would be honest with them. <clears throat> be honest with them about where you are and, you know, I've, I've never had sex, I've never really dated, et cetera, et cetera. And don't be ashamed. You're 23, not 35. It'll be fine, bro. And I mean, any any girl that, you know, knocks you back because of that, fuck her. I mean, don't fuck her because <laughs> don't worry about her. Who cares? She's a banana. And look, you're not the right man for her. It's not the right time for you. It's not the right time for her. Whatever. You need to be okay and comfortable with rejection. Okay. You're going to get rejected and it's not because you're bad. It's because you're not the right fit. And that's okay, my friend. Because again, you need to become the man that you need to be so that when a woman meets you, she can't say no. Because eventually you're going to meet a woman to whom you cannot say no and you want her to be able to say yes because you're the right man, okay? So get yourself together and then worry about a relationship. You need to find a new place to live with your own space. Now, not immediately. It doesn't have to happen right now, but you just need to put that in your goal list. That's my goal. I'm going to do everything I do is going to work towards that, okay? Then that will give you the freedom to be who you want. It'll give you the freedom to bring women home or a woman home to your to your apartment. Um, just make sure you fucking clean your room before your mum comes over, bro. Because you know what Muslim mums are like. She will ruin you if she finds out. <laughs> right? So, um, yeah, that's what I would do, man. Get yourself together. Keep yourself busy. And then... Um, Find a place to live and then you can start dating women and um, preparing to make mistakes that lead to success, okay? Look, dude, 34 minutes. I wish you all the best. Um, I hope it goes well. And look, there are answers out there for you. You you just have to find them. You got to do the homework and the hard work of finding them, okay? Um, and it looks like you are. I mean, you know, you got a pretty good view of yourself, seem like a decent guy. Um, be a little bit less nice. Don't be so friendly with um, with uh, the woman that you're trying to romance. I'm just going to go through my video list and try to find um, which video I did. Was it, why don't girls seem interested in me anymore? Uh, May 18. Or was it, uh, all my friends 
Anyway, it's in there somewhere. I did a video about not being too nice. Okay, so check that out. Look, I hope it goes well, man. Good luck.